Hey you, and thank you for hitting play on this, on this video. So what I'm about to share with you is a reproduction of a talk I recently gave where my, uh, some women at our church decided to come up with this new amazing women's ministry for our church, Eagleville, Eagleville Bible Church. And they came to me and asked if I would be the guest speaker as they began to introduce this new ministry titled Woven um, in January of 2022. And the title of the, um, the event would be called Rise Up. So I'm going to share excerpts of my talk during that event. And um, I wasn't going to record this, but enough people have asked me and I feel also the Holy Spirit nudging me to record this. So I'm going to do that. It's going to be a little bit um, clunky, <laughs> um, but I believe that should you pay attention, this message, um, it could lead to a transformation in your life. But here's the thing I need you to know. The content I'm going to be sharing with you, the information I'm going to be sharing with you in this message could lead to a transformation in your life. But what you need to know about information is that information alone does not equate to transformation, but rather the application of the information you hear it during this video could lead to your transformation. What you're about to hear is going to be a little bit detailed and um, as I share a lot of scripture and a lot of photos of my truth and my family, I encourage you to do what you can to just kind of capture the essence of what I'm sharing with you today. Um, maybe write down the scriptural references and come back. I encourage you, if you're somebody looking for transformation in your life, to put yourself in a position to really be fully present and to listen to what I'm saying. Um, some of the pictures will be entertaining, but to just really listen to the words that I'm, that I'm sharing with you in this clip. I believe that in doing so, it could position you to receive an awakening, a new truth, if you will, about God's word. I believe that what I say in this, this video, I guess, is worth hearing and that there could be um, an awakening for you. There will also be Christian life coaching in this session. So I would encourage you, if you're somebody who's you know, interested in transformation through life coaching, Christian life coaching, to pay attention to the life coaching questions that I'll be asking you about halfway through. So a little bit about me. I'm a Christian life coach. I'm a wife. I'm a mom. Um, my husband, my husband, Harry, and I live in Ohio. We have three little kids, Haley, Jillian, and Landon. We have two dogs, um, Oscar, who's my faithful companion, and we have a recent addition to our family, a, a golden doodle, a large golden doodle named Charles Stanley. <laughs> His name is Charlie. Um, so I just want to take you through the essence of what I shared um, during this Rise Up event. So when the Woven, the new Woven ministry team originally came to me and asked if I would speak at this conference, I was speechless. I was humbled and honored that they would actually ask me. They told me that the focus of this event would be kicking off a new women's ministry for Eagle the Bible Church and that the topic would be Rise. And they shared this exciting news with me and they had extended the invitation for me to speak. And though I immediately answered yes, that I would speak, I, you know, all of those feelings came to me immediately flooding me with, you know, how ill-equipped I was. And then I began to wonder, like, wait a second, do these women know that I'm a Christian life coach for weight loss, right? Because that mattered. <laughs> Rise Up didn't necessarily have a lot to do with weight loss, Christian life coaching for weight loss. And instantly those, these thoughts started to download to my heart where I didn't feel like I was the best candidate for this Rise event. In my flesh, I didn't think I could speak to, to really anything else other than what God has had me speaking about over the last four or five years which is weight loss, you know, I didn't think I could bring, a, bring it all together. And just like that, God's supernatural peace overcame me and he assured me. And suddenly I knew that speaking at this women's event, this woven women's event where the topic would be rise up, wasn't going to be about what I was going to do or what I was going to say. This was, was, this was really about what God needed me to say. And this was going to be about my obedience to listening to his guidance and preparing this message that you're about to hear. So I had peace and assurance that God would reveal a message to me, and it would be the exact message that not only the women who attended this event needed to hear, but also you listening to the replay of it. 
um, as I began to pray about this message, I could feel impressions that God was making on my heart. I knew that God was asking me to finally write my testimony. But I wasn't really sure how my testimony would parlay into an encouraging message. These women had come to me and asked me <clears throat> to create, to write an encouraging message. And I wasn't sure how my weight loss journey, my testimony would parlay into encouragement, right? Like I just didn't see that. I was so used to my testimony being one where I had, where I'd stopped drinking wine every day, how I had applied God's word to every single area of my life and even applied it to my weight loss journey. I was so used to my testimony being one where I had stopped living in my own will and instead sought and surrendered to God's will over my life. And that is when God showed me that my testimony wasn't just about weight loss. Rather, it was about rising up. What I'm about to share with you is my experience in going from being lost to being found. I'm going to reveal the truth of my personal awakening through the Holy Spirit and how I came to know Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Until my encounter with the Holy Spirit a handful of years ago, I had not known all all that I know now about the gospel. I mean, nobody ever witnessed to me in a way that I hope to witness to you today. You see, while I am a Christian life coach now, I wasn't always one. In fact, about seven years ago, I was lost and all alone. I was in the dark about God's truth, about his word, or even his will for my life. I believed every single thing that the New Age movement had fed me, and I truly believed that I was in control of my life and that I could be my own hero. That I, I, I kind of believed that I could save myself. I was so conformed to the patterns of this world, living with a sin tolerance in ways that I was simply too asleep to see. I perpetually worshipped comfort, and on a near daily basis, I ran to idols for relief in the form of ease and comfort and familiarity and food and wine and alcohol. Well, I guess wine is alcohol, right? <laughs> I believed in making my own dreams come true and trusting myself and living life according <clears throat> excuse me, to my agenda. <clears throat> excuse me, leveraging my type A corporate willpower. I was so selfish and focused on my physical wants over my spiritual needs. But here's the thing. I was just asleep and oblivious to it until God intervened. And very vividly, I remember having a spiritual awakening. The spiritual, this spiritual awakening of mine came at a point when I was completely, you know, I was physically successful by the world standards and I, I and yet I was completely living in spiritual poverty poverty according to God's standards. I remember where I was when the Holy Spirit awakened me to the truth of God's word. Okay, so imagine this. I was standing in my bedroom closet. It was a Sunday morning and I remember feeling completely defeated and depressed and overwhelmed in life and in motherhood. And at the time, I was a corporate executive for a large financial institution in downtown Cleveland, while also, I mean, a full-time wife and mom of three very small children at the time. My life was void of God, and I had all the fruit to prove it. I remember being, I remember being in the bedroom closet and secretly crying, from the overwhelm and the fatigue as I organized and sorted out all of the seasonal baby clothes. I had a list so long of things that I needed to get that get done that day and I was completely exhausted. And the day hadn't even started. It, I mean, it was like first thing in the morning. <clears throat> but there I was thinking about all the things that I needed to get done and I was just wiped out. And in that moment, I remember feeling like I was at my rock bottom that I had reached a complete and total new low in my life. I mean, there I was. I was overweight. I was on a cocktail of antidepressants, and I was self-medicating every single night with wine. I mean, almost every single night. I could not see the way out of my struggle. I mean, I no longer had any joy in my life. I was frustrated, overwhelmed, and I was seeking more in my life because I was drowning in the responsibilities of my career, the demands of my career, of motherhood, and all of the things that it required of me. And you know, to the world standards, I was not failing at all. And yet I felt so sad, empty, and defeated. And that's when my awakening began. And I remember as I stood there in tears, sorting through all of those baby clothes, I remember being prompted with this thought, just surrender. I mean, immediately I dismissed this thought because surrender was not something 
that was not something in my Taipei vocabulary. <laughs> and it was at that point that I began to realize that I felt almost as if that thought of just surrender was not my own thought. I mean, that thought was completely counter to how I was feeling and certainly counter to my own thoughts in that season of my life. I could not have known it then, but the Holy Spirit was ministering to my broken and troubled heart. He was beginning the process of awakening me to the truth of Jesus Christ. And my awakening continued into the next day. I remember it vividly. And y'all, I have a horrible memory, so this is pretty profound. It was a Monday morning, and I was working from, my, from home. I had a corporate home office, and I could already feel the weight of the day's volume on my shoulders. The day had not even begun yet again, and there I was. I felt angst and stressed as my lunch hour approach, approached, and I noticed that I had a longing already for white wine. I had become so used to relieving stress with alcohol. I mean, the world had taught me that this was an acceptable form of stress relief. And there I was in the middle of a work day craving white wine. And I was tempted too because, in, you know, I had a home office and I could easily go and drink that wine without a single soul knowing about it because Harry was at work and the kids were either at, you know, daycare or at school. And I knew that my day was going to be so full of stressful conference calls and my evening full of bubble baths and diapers and dishes and endless mom duties, all the things, right? Like I knew this. And so I did what naturally just came to me, what came to me naturally. You see, my entire life I'd been a journaler. And so in that moment, instead of actually going to the wine cabinet and pulling out, you know, my favorite Chardonnay, I pulled out a journal and I began to journal about what was stressing me out, what was giving me heartache and giving me problems and what I was feeling in that moment. And then that is when I felt the prompting again. This time it was in the form of a question. Now lean in and listen to this. Now I felt the prompting of the Holy Spirit, like deep down in my heart, in my spirit, a prompting. And I felt as if the Holy Spirit had offered to answer any question that I might have. As if the Holy Spirit had prompted me with the thought, Sherry, ask me any question and I will give you the answer. I remember like just sitting there and thinking, ask me any question? <laughs> what? Immediately, I could totally sense my pride stepping up to the plate. And as I shrugged off this encounter with this thought that was in my in my heart, I just shrugged off this encounter because there I was in my 40s. You know what I mean? What didn't I know? What questions could I possibly need answers to? I mean, I had truly convinced myself that there was not anything that I did not know. And so I continued on with my day as usual, not giving this encounter much more thought at all. And then it was time for bed. And this is where it gets crazy. All right, you listening? <laughs> as I finally laid my head on the pillow, it happened again that now familiar prompting from the Holy Spirit was back. It had returned. And in my heart, I could sense his still small voice impressing another question upon my heart. This time the question was, so what's your question? Like I was floored, you know, I was floored. So what's my question? I mean, almost without pausing, I knew what my question was. Like here I was, the Holy Spirit had offered was reaching out to me, awakening me and saying, Sherry, ask me any question and I'll answer it. And now the Holy Spirit is like holding me accountable. <laughs> Sherry, what's your question? And excitedly in my heart, I responded with the very first question that I truly knew. Like I had an instinct. I knew the question that I truly felt was something I didn't know. And so I responded, okay, you know what? Voice inside of my head. I don't know the difference between God, Jesus, or the Lord. I mean, and immediately with like such an assurance and such a confidence, the answer, this truth was delivered to my heart. All right, here we go. This is what the Holy Spirit ministered to me that, that evening as I had the courage to ask the question. The Holy Spirit responded and said, I'm Jesus Christ, the Lord of the land. And just like a landlord walks on the land, I walked on the land. I'm the Lord of the land. Listen to me. <laughs> I sat up straight in my bed, completely baffled. I mean, those thoughts were not my thoughts. Those words were not my words. I could have never known that Jesus was the Lord. I simply was not somebody who had ever read the Bible. I mean, I really didn't even own a Bible. I never knew the words of Philippians 2.11, which says that every tongue shall declare that Jesus Christ is the Lord to the glory of God the Father. And in that moment, I felt a shift happening. 
And in, in my excitement, like here I was, I'm totally excited. Um, y'all, I jumped up out of my bed. I sprinted down a flight of steps to the living room where Harry was completely still awake watching the 11 o'clock news. And something you need to know about Harry is he grew up in the church. He'd been a Christian nearly his entire life and he knew that Bible inside and out. He'd been baptized as, as a young adult and he knew God's word well. And I stood there in front of him completely like just dazed and confused and full of astonishment and rather excitedly, especially for me at 11 o'clock at night, I just looked at him and I said, Harry, is Jesus Christ the Lord? And I know he was completely like puzzled by the fact that I was still up and that I had that much energy and baffled by the fact that I was asking him this seemingly random question. And I remember him responding to me and saying, what? Why are you still up? <laughs> and then he just looked at me and he said, yeah, Jesus Christ is the Lord. Why? And y'all, I just looked at him in amazement, despite how crazy I knew I looked and sounded in that moment. And I just told him, I said, because the Holy Spirit just revealed that to me. And I just wanted to confirm it with you. On that day, the Holy Spirit awakened me and I began to rise up boldly. And you know, within the next day or two, I remember running to the local Walmart and I bought this little Bible for $4.59 and I began to consume it. You know, I guess I should say it kind of began to consume me. <laughs> and through God's word, the Holy Spirit began to reveal so much truth that my life began to change nearly instantaneously. I saw how I had been a sinner and how I'd been living so wrongly for so many years. Y'all, I never really understood sin or or even believed in Jesus because I'm about to say something here. I never believed in Jesus because he simply was not cool enough for me. I mean, the world had offered way cooler options. All my friends were participating in all of these cooler options. I never knew what I know now. And no one ever even revealed the gospel to me in a way that I could truly comprehend. I mean, truth, truthfully, I had never thought of myself even as a sinner because there I was. I was a good person. I thought being a good person was enough to get me into heaven. And then I found the definition of sin. If you don't know the definition of sin, I encourage you to write this scripture down. down. James 4, 17, which says that when you know what to do, you should do it. Or when you know what to do, you should do when you know what you should do and you don't do it, that that is sin to you. I know I, I messed that up. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. The definition of sin is when you know what you should do and you don't do it, that is sin to you. And that's when nearly every single thing in my life changed. I, I started to recognize the sin in my life that was keeping me from God and why it all even mattered so much. I mean, just by knowing the definition of sin, it helped me to see the damaging effects that it was having on my life and how it had led me away from God. The Bible began to reveal to me that God has a holy nature and that God's holy nature simply cannot tolerate to be in the presence of sin. And I began to see that the wages of sin, according to Romans 6, 23, were death. And that was why it mattered that Jesus died for my sins. I mean, he died to pay the price once and for all for sin, to give us access to, to God. I learned that while Christ's death, you might want to write this down, that while Christ's death freed me from sin, it also obligated me to his service. And it was in this season of my life that I saw the truth and that I admitted that I was a sinner according to Acts 2.38. And I believe that Christ had died for my sins and that he rose again, according to Romans 10, 9 and 10. And I saw just how cool, just how cool Jesus actually was and how worthy he was of my life too. And so I confessed and repented of my sins, according to what Romans 10, 11 through 13 teaches us to do. And you know what? I began to, new, I began to live a new life in him. I mean, the Holy Spirit, think about this, the Holy Spirit awakened me from my sleep. He poured light into my darkness and he breathed, he breathed his life into me and resurrected my heart. And you know what? I stepped slowly into his grace and out of my own dark tomb. I released the desires, my constant and perpetual desires for constant comfort with every single act of obedience. I began to yield to that still constant, that constant still small voice that ministered to my heart as I searched for the truth. And in my awakening, in my own rising up, God used several scriptures to deposit spiritual wisdom into my heart as he helped me 
to live according to my Christian values. I mean, these Christian values helped me to become eternally focused versus just living focused on the temporal. And through God's word, I learned. I learned that I needed to I needed to stop conforming to the patterns of this world and to be transformed through the renewing of my mind. And over the course of the next many months, I felt a sudden desire. I really did. I felt a sudden desire to leave my career in corporate America, to say goodbye to six figures as I stepped into the life coaching arena. And you know, here's the thing. Life coaching just naturally fit my strengths, right? Like God had clearly gifted me with the ability to write and teach and to speak easily to women. But it wasn't until I started reading the Bible, listen to this, because this is a message for you. It was not until I started reading the Bible every single day without fail that my life began to change. It began to look different and to produce real Christian fruit. So as I consumed God's word, my, man, my mind began to renew. I mean, I remember feeling more spiritually wise and changed as I read so much of God's word. In fact, here is a scripture that completely changed my life. I want you to write this down. 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16, which says that we are to be holy because God is holy. And here's what you need to know about being holy. To be holy means to be set aside for sacred use. I mean, think about that. Turn your, I'd like to turn your attention now to Acts 1.8, which is where Jesus tells us that we will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes and that we are to be his witnesses. We are to go out and to tell people about him everywhere we go. And I realized that until I was born again, I mean, listen to this. Until I was born again, I was a witness only of my flesh and of the things of this world. I was truly just testifying to my weaknesses as a completely hopeless and lost sinner who was just asleep. And so boldly in my new courageous desire and confidence that really came from the Holy Spirit, I started to live a life in pursuit of righteousness to draw God more near to my heart. And as our pastor, Pastor Bill McMinn shared in December of 2021, and something I teach to my clients all of the time is to live righteously means to just make right decisions. So there I was pursuing a life in pers- I was living a life in pursuit of righteousness, but that's all righteousness means. It, it means to just make right decisions repeatedly. And so as I continue to pursue holiness through righteousness, God promoted me from being just a Christian or from being a life coach in the secular arena to a Christian life coach. And I'm telling you, when I was just a life coach in the secular arena, I couldn't do anything. I could not change my life until I applied God's word. And because God's ways are not our ways, I mean, listen to this. He equipped me to become a Christian life coach for a weight loss. I mean, let's face it. <laughs> that doesn't even sound like a real thing now, does it? No, it doesn't. I understand. <laughs> and so now I desire to let my life, to let my life be a witness to be an example to every single woman, every single person that I encounter, witnessing to them about the transformational power of being a born-again believer in the one true King. So as the years unfolded, I stepped out of the world and into God's will. I left my comfortable slumber to rise up. And I, along with my family, was baptized in the spring of 2019 at... um, at Eagleville Bible Church, and I now teach women to seek God instead of a number on the scale and to recognize how God's word applies to their entire life. Like there's no area of your life that is exempt. I teach women how to prioritize their life according to their Christian values, which are often, listen to this, they're often counter to the world's values. Our Christian values, your Christian values, are your moral compass. And this is what allows you to prioritize your life according to what is important to God versus what is just important to this world. And so to equip you, um, if you send me an email, I will give you access to a, a way that you can discern your Christian values. So make sure that you reach out to me. My email address is coachcapilla at gmail.com and I'll send you this little Christian value assessment. So I believe that knowing your Christian values can help you to structure your life according to what really matters. And I want you to have the tools today, as soon as you send me that email, to structure your life in a way that God can truly use you 
for his kingdom. Now, since my encounter with the Holy Spirit, I have boldly worn my faith on my sleeve, all to glorify God. None of what I've accomplished was, none of it was done alone and none of it has been easy, but all of it has been worth it. I now have a supernatural joy living a life void of all of the wrong, of the wrong values and the wrong influences and foods. And I have no desire for alcohol. I've not had that desire in years now. And none of what I do now is even what I professionally went to school for. You know, I mean, I have a business management degree. I'm a certified project manager. And though I've stepped into, you know, becoming a certified Christian life coach, none of what I did leading up to being a Christian life coach is what I went to school for. And yet I've been prepared through every experience in my life for this call on my life. And now I encourage women to do what Colossians 1.10 teaches. You might want to write this down. Colossians 1.10 teaches us to live in a way that honors and pleases the Lord in every single way. And that is what I want to talk to you today. I want to talk to you about how to rise up, when to rise up, and why it even matters, and how to live a life that honors and pleases and glorifies God. You see, what you need to know is that you need to make up your mind to honor God. You must make up your mind to honor God as his word tells you to do in Malachi 2.2. We need to understand that sometimes, actually, you know what? A lot of the time, honoring God with your life means doing hard things that are going to be out of your comfort zone. And when you do that, that is how you rise up. So it is, it's time for all of us to rise up in a multitude of ways, to consciously choose to not focus on honoring what this world values and instead to and what this world values and honors because we know what it says in Luke 16, 15. It says that God's word tells us that what this world honors is detestable in the sight of God. So we must see that as women, we are all leaders in some capacity. We cannot neglect our responsibilities or be ruled by what is convenient or familiar or easy or comfortable. We are reflections of God, ladies, to our families, to our friends, to our coworkers, and to one another. <clears throat> and to those of us locally within our church, we've been instructed in Titus 2, 3, and 4 to live in a way that honors God and to train younger women in all of the right ways. This is how we rise up, by living to honor, please, and glorify God with our lives as witnesses and to raise one another up in our church, all of the women in our church family. We must see ourselves as the faithful few, the remnant. Now, I just want to pull over and bring to your attention what is the remnant. The remnant is a holy seed of faithful followers, those who remained faithful to God despite the circumstances that they lived in. Being a part of the remnant required faith. And I love what Romans 11.5 says. It says, so too, at this present time, there is a remnant chosen by grace. If you want to know more about the remnant, I encourage you to just go read the entire book of Malachi. I mean, it's only four four chapters, <laughs> or specifically look up Malachi 3, 16 through 4, 6. So what I want to say about rising up is when you rise up, that is how you offer God all that you have, because all that you have is enough. It's all God needs of you. <clears throat> with your gifts, your life, and your bodies, you must come together with all of the other women in your church and in your life to rise up. So why does rising up even matter? Like you might be asking yourself this, right? Well, like our pastor recently shared in, in a recent sermon, we, the reason we need to rise up is because our race is not finished yet. And why it matters that we rise up is in order to be a witness, to be a witness through your daily life. And this is often going to mean that you must be willing to be uncomfortable, be willing to let God use you, to refine you, to help you to then refine others. You must be willing to let God weave your old self into your new self. Give God all that you have because that's all he wants and that is all he needs. Give him all that you are currently in this moment. It doesn't matter how it doesn't matter how broken and tattered and torn your history is. It doesn't matter how ill-equipped you might feel that you might be in this moment. Give God yourself as a remnant to be woven into his masterpiece.
Now, I never like to end a message without letting you experience what it's like to be coached by a Christian life coach. I want to give you the tools so that you can step into being the remnant yourself, to position yourself to be a witness more boldly through your everyday life. And I need to start by telling you a little bit about what it means to be coached by a Christian life coach. A Christian life coach is not somebody who bullies you (laughs) or tells you what to do. Rather, when you work with me as a Christian life coach, we partner. I partner with you and we invite the Holy Spirit to guide us together to God's will for your life over any given situation in your life. And today, today what I'm going to take you through is a set of Christian life coaching questions. You're going to see them appearing on your screen. And I just want you to go through these questions, pause the video and answer them honestly. Now in closing, I know this was a lot of content. And so I would encourage you to be spiritually set apart from the world's ways. It's not an easy task to be holy in an unholy world. I get that. But God isn't asking you to do this on your own. He has sent you His Holy Spirit. And just as our pastor said a few weeks ago in a, in a, in a Sunday sermon, God will strengthen you to do what you feel that you can't do on your own. So don't let your past or your environment or what the world values to shape you Rather, you go and you shape your environment and ask God to help you to shape your future, all for his glory. Don't compromise to this world so that you are just one of the crowd, blending in completely unnoticed. When you do that, you are useless to God. So position yourself to be useful for God. Give him yourself. Give him your life as a remnant. Give God all that you have right now, all that you are in this moment. Give him yourself as a remnant to be woven into his masterpiece. Now, you'll notice at the end of this presentation, I have given you screenshots. If you are interested in that value assessment, instead of sending me an email, just take a look at the screen. I even have more information about the Seekers Method, my website, and how you might learn more about me. If you're interested or have any questions, by all means, visit my website, sherrycapilla.com.